I am here looking out the window at our beautiful red cardinal in the tree at the Maycomber Center here in Framingham where it's a beautiful space for young people to come and explore and learn and be themselves five days a week. Uh, beautiful outside of nature and so exciting and creative. You can hear the noises behind me of young people eager to learn about life and I look forward to learning more about the center and about Ben Draper as I begin to interview him. Hi Ben, thank Hi. you for having me here today at the Maycomber Center uh, where we will get to know you a little bit and talk about your life and I understand you are new to Hopkinton you have just recently moved into town, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can start off by saying how you came about settling into Hopkinton recently, why you have, and what you like about the town. Yeah, um, I've lived in the area for a long time. I lived in Natick mm -hmm. and Wayland. Uh, Hopkinton's a little bit further out in the woods than I'm used to, but um, that's part of what attracted us to the area, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we live right on the town forest. Ah. And um, in fact, I go out my back door with my dog and we're right there. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, for me, that's really the most interesting part about where we live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the hiking trails and being outside. A lot more opportunity to be outside when you live right there next mm -hmm. to the woods. That's right. And there's a lot of beautiful area. <clears throat> yeah. So, well, welcome <laughs> to the town as Thank a you. newcomer. Thank you. Um, and today we are not in Hopkinton, however. We are here at the Maycomber Center, mm -hmm. and you are the founder, and I'm wondering... One of the founders, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if you could tell a little about the story of um, why and how uh, this place was founded. Sure. And what it's about. So... Uh, this is our seventh year, mm -hmm. and um, when we started, I, I had just had my first son, mm -hmm. and um, we were thinking about, uh, I guess I was thinking about education because I had such a unique education myself, mm -hmm. and, um, and my wife had a very typical education mm -hmm. in a local public school. And she was very eager not to have our son go through that experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was actually pretty, I was open to finding out more about that sort of education, mm -hmm. having not gone through it myself. But I was also pretty sure that we would end up doing something um, more along the lines of um, democratic education. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I had been raised with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I happened to come across a small group of parents at that time who were also looking for something um, out, way outside the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And um, so I decided to sort of help them create a community for their kids to educate mm -hmm. themselves, which was based on the kind of community that I had grown up with. Mm -hmm. And I felt I was in a unique position to be able to sort of help create and guide that sort of community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they were looking for as well. So that's, that's how we started this place. Mm -hmm. So shortly after coming together with a circle of people, this was created here? Yeah, we did it pretty quickly, wow. basically over the course of a summer. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, they were they were wrapping up the academic year for their kids, and they were pretty sure that by September they wanted to really try to move to mm -hmm. something new. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had the the summer to yeah. kind of throw it all together. You hustled then. Yeah, that. we did. Huh. And I, I think there was a benefit in that, you know, we didn't have too long right. to kind of obsess over the details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, you know, sort of worked out the kinks as we went along mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of, you know, putting a lot of time and energy and money into creating something beforehand. We just kind of hit the ground running. Wow. 
uh, well, it's a lovely space here and it looks exciting and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of uh, creativity and uh, exploration, it seems, yeah. innovative thinking. Um, <clears throat> so how, what did you do to bring this about uh, so quickly? A particular mission you came up with for this, based on your past experience, your wife's experience, and so what would you say is a primary uh, mission or philosophy of this center? Um, really to give children the freedom to follow their own interests mm -hmm. and um, not have their everyday experience over-determined by adults who mm -hmm. think that they know better what children should be doing, how they should be spending their time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, really to give the kids the lead in mm -hmm. that. And the role of the adults is to, um, you know, be available and, um, and you know, also engage in our own interests and spend our time in ways that we find meaningful and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And in that way, serve as models. Mm, uh -huh. um, and then to, you know, be available to help kids when they need it with mm -hmm. whatever they need, from uh, tying their shoes or getting a Band-Aid to, you know, finding resources on the Internet or whatever it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. So a bit like guides and mm -hmm. mentors yeah. rather than teachers. Yeah. I think what ad what adults even in this we call this self directed education, this, mm -hmm. and it's much larger than um, than just the Maycumber Center. It's you know a movement that's going been going on for some time now. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really difficult for adults, whether you're a parent or a sort of educator, facilitator, guide, um, is to accept the minimal level of help that children really require. Mm -hmm. You know, we tend to think that um, if children are directing their own education, they must need a lot of support and a lot of help. Mm -hmm. Actually, mostly they do it on their own. And uh, the help they need tends to be, as, I'm, as I said, sort of more practical, everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, less academic or inspiration or anything like that. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. Um, so, let's see, how do we... I have a lot of questions about that. Um, so, you talk about this is uh, based on a particular uh, philosophy of self-education. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a particular um, leader or uh, theorist uh, behind uh, that who is the roots of this? Or? Yeah, there are a few important mm -hmm. ones. Um, there was a book published uh, in um, the early 1960s in mm -hmm. the United States mm -hmm. called Summerhill mm -hmm. uh, by A.S. Neal. That was pretty important because it was so widely read. Mm -hmm. um, in the first couple years that it was published, it was read by something like three, well, it was sold, you know, three million copies, mm -hmm. who knows how many people read it, but, um, or of the people who read it, you know, how many people really accepted it or, or mm -hmm. absorbed it. But um, that was a really important book. It was about A.S. Neal's school mm -hmm. in England, um, and it inspired a small movement in the United States of democratic free schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he wasn't the first to do this, but he was the first to kind of popularize it in a way at, at a time when there was a lot of receptivity during the 60s mm -hmm. to new ideas. Um, and then John Holt is sometimes referred to as the father of homeschooling. He coined the term unschooling. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wrote some really important books in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. um, that are still being read by parents looking to homeschool and unschool their kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and more recently, there's an organization called the Alliance for Self-Directed Education, mm -hmm. which is really attempting to kind of um, cast a wider net, sort of bring these unschooling, democratic education, um, homeschooling 
under one umbrella and mm -hmm. say this is basically one large movement of mm -hmm. giving children freedom mm -hmm. to um, take control of their own education. Mm -hmm. wow. It sounds uh, very exciting mm. to learn more about and uh, so folks who are watching this uh, have some resources as well as there's a website for the Make Humber Center here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I want to move on talking more about your life as well, but uh, children and uh, young people here, um, what would you say that they are exploring in, in daily life as part of their ongoing experience? Um, they're exploring everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, imagine having the whole day to yourself mm -hmm. with your friends mm -hmm. and the resources you need to explore the world around you. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to go to work. They don't have to do homework. Mm -hmm. um, they're not at home. They don't have to take out the trash. They're just here to look at books, look on the internet, run around outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they share information with each other. They're constantly telling each other about things they found online or, you know, places they went over the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really no, there's no typical day, no typical learning style or plan mm -hmm. for any of the kids. Mm -hmm. okay. And then there's the six staff here who also bring to bear their vast, you know, experience and mm -hmm. skills and interests. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so there's a lot, a lot to explore. Mm. And from your website, I see uh, there are things like filmmaking and particular events that happen as concerts and mm -hmm. Harvest Day, I believe. Yeah. Um, as well, all kinds of uh, enriching type of opportunities. Yeah. I mean, some right. that are maybe tradition, and then others, whatever the young person wants to engage in. Right. Which could be different every day. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so um, for any given child, you know, what that day has in store is totally unknown to the kid when he or she mm. walks through mm -hmm. the door in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and every day is different and every child is different. Um, so there's a lot of um, variety and unpredictability there. But then like any community, um, you know, we develop certain kinds of traditions and mm -hmm, certain mm -hmm. practices and routines. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of music that happens here. We have a music room and that's a really important mm. um, place. A lot of instruments from A lot of right? instruments, mm -hmm. yeah, and a lot of musicians, um, beginners and experts. And um, there's also filmmaking that's mm -hmm. just kind of something that developed as a kind of ongoing routine here. Um, mm -hmm. That sounds exciting. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's not any kind of formal educational experience mm -hmm. in the way that most people would think of it. It's just something that um, one particular staff and a few of the kids started doing one day that's you know, gained momentum and become a little bit more formalized and routine. Mm -hmm. I see. And then, um, you know, we have two music shows every year mm -hmm. and an ongoing uh, YouTube series of videos and, mm -hmm. you know, so. Wow, that must be very exciting yeah. for the young people who are here to mm -hmm. see themselves on YouTube. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and from what I understand, this is not considered a, a form of homeschooling program, but it sinks in with homeschooling uh, provision mm -hmm. for the uh, young people. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're a very um, unusual kind of organization because we're we're sort of um, the day-to-day -day culture here mm -hmm. is similar to a democratic free school mm -hmm. because it's not a parent-run co-op or a homeschool group. Um, 
It's not a public school or private school, obviously. There's no classes, no report cards, no grades. Um, but it's also not a school because the kids only, you know, some kids come two days a week, some kids come three days a week, some are full time. Mm -hmm. um, so the legal designation is as a homeschool resource center. Mm -hmm. um, that means that each family is responsible for their child's education. Mm -hmm. I see. This is just a community where the kids come for, you know, a few days a week mm -hmm. or all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. And, um, I just saw a t-shirt uh, at an 80th birthday party the other night that said, be yourself because everyone else has been taken. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder, it seems from looking at the website and being here, that's a large part of uh, what is experienced uh, for the children that they are respected and honored mm -hmm. for being their authentic selves, having the freedom to explore and learn as you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Sounds really wonderful that we have not traditionally been reinforced to do. Um, and I wonder if I can attend <laughs> and be a, be a participant here. Yeah. Probably a lot too of, old. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of parents, I think, Would send like their come. children <laughs> thinking sort of, you know, what a great, how much they wish they could have mm, had yes, this sort yes. of thing. Yes, yes, oh, it is a great philosophy. Vicariously, you know, they enjoy this experience through their children. Yes, um, and um, I, I, it's, a, it's a small center. There are others, as you were saying, and one question I have also is, what could we extract from what you are learning uh, and what you are doing here, um, maybe for the greater uh, world, uh, to benefit uh, in some way, to teach who maybe can't have this uh, opportunity, or um, is something have you come up with as an insight that could be taught, reinforced out in the world, and we could apply at a larger level as well? Yeah, I think. Um we all just as a culture, as a society, I think we really underestimate the extent to which all human beings have a real psychological need mm -hmm. for freedom and autonomy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to be respected as who they see themselves as, mm -hmm. who they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, there's an awful lot of um, unhappy people in the world. I think um, many people have not been felt, been made to feel that it's okay to be who they want to be. Mm -hmm. And this starts at an early age. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, for parents, even if you don't have access to a, a place like the Maycumber Center, I think um, you really need to take it seriously when your child says that he or she hate school and doesn't want to be there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that um, you know they're not enjoying they're really not enjoying something about their childhood mm -hmm. um, you know too often we say that's life mm -hmm. um, right but I think they're really saying something important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the human experience mm -hmm. that that um, you know this is really important for human beings to thrive mm -hmm. Yeah, to listen carefully and deeply to children right. when that is being said. And uh, this is a place that reinforces listening deeply to young people. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, thank you for thinking about that and offering that. Um, mm. And um, I'm curious about your own roots back in time. Ha what got you started... Um, thinking in this way, uh, favoring this type of a philosophy? Is it part of your life from early childhood, perhaps even playing um, as a child, which often can lead, direct us in our lives, and we don't even know it? Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. I was, um, my mother was a fourth grade school teacher for about a year. That's mm -hmm. what she studied to do. And um, 
it, you know, she just had the feeling right off the bat that this was not fair to children to mm -hmm. be telling them what they needed to be interested in and what was important to them. Uh, she wanted to know what they w were interested in and what they wanted to do. And um, this didn't, did not work within that institutional framework, obviously. Mm -hmm. She had to leave and um, she was just very open to the idea from very early on in my life mm -hmm. that, uh, that maybe my path wouldn't fit with traditional education mm -hmm. and it didn't mm -hmm. and um, so she really gave me a tremendous amount of uh, trust and freedom to you know chart my own course mm. and so she ended up um, she homeschooled me for a couple you know year or two mm -hmm. and then um, as I got older, more and more of my friends went into school and I had less and less friends to play with around my neighborhood. So she ended up bringing me all the way out to Framingham to Sudbury Valley School. Mm -hmm. And I started there when I was about eight and I was there in my entire childhood. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful childhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was- So that's I about was, 18. Uh, uh, so yeah. 17 or 18. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I was pretty much happy mm -hmm. every day of my life. I see, yeah. So, uh, you know, I've always just felt that this is very important for children to have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. and um, From your own children to children yeah. out in community as well. Yeah. And so it's just never made it happen. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. never felt right to me to, you know, tell kids how to live their lives mm -hmm. any more than to tell anyone else how to live their lives. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, in addition to this work you do full-time, you are here uh, working as director these mm -hmm. days. Uh, I understand that you're also working as a meditation teacher uh, locally of uh, Tibetan Buddhism um, mm -hmm. uh, orientation as well as a fellow at MIT in the media lab there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that is interesting, the mix of, in a way, it seems spirituality and science that you are doing and sounds very uh, exciting, uh, those two types of work. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about um, what you do in, in each setting? Yeah, um, I help lead, well, I lead a meditation and um, study group at mm -hmm. the Common Street Spiritual Center. Mm -hmm in Natick on Monday nights. And um, I, you know, I lead it according to my, the tradition that I'm studying and that I'm following, which is Tibetan Buddhism. And uh, I started meditating when I was 17. Mm -hmm. I read a very uh, sort of classic book in the genre called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I started when I was 17 trying to kind of make sense of the book and do my own practice. And I've just been working on that sort of on and off. It's led me through different forms of Buddhism. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, learning at a relatively young age. Yeah. On a yeah. deep topic. Mm -hmm. mm. So, and now you are a teacher in a way, guiding people yeah. in meditation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um, and you are also making time to go over to MIT mm -hmm. uh, and be a part of this uh, group of people. And from what I understand, everyone is selected for a unique aspect about themselves mm. to contribute to kind of, would you say, a think tank of mm -hmm. innovative ideas to send out to the world? Yeah, yeah. It's a really, the Media Lab is a really interesting place. A lot of super interesting people and um, projects going on there. And they're really interested in self-directed learning. Um, that's what I think they want to strengthen and have more of mm -hmm. at MIT. Um, so they're interested in learning more about the Maycumber Center and mm -hmm. how it works here. And um, I'm interested in learning about everything that goes on in the Media mm -hmm. Lab. I would imagine so a pretty exciting job. And it's really... Um, brought a lot of richness and resources 
to the Maycumber Center. Mm -hmm. um, a lot oh. of the people I've met there. And, mm -hmm. I would think so, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're kind of reaching out into the world with the ideas you come up with, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which uh, it sounds like a great honor and very exciting it is, um, yeah. part of your work, uh, just as it is here. And I can see how that all sinks together uh, for you and your life and uh, kind of uh, feeds one another too. Your, your experience at 17 to be a teacher in meditation now and to use that philosophy and also um, to be out at MIT and in a way making a difference in the world there as well mm. as right here. Mm -hmm. um, and we have one minute to go. Okay. Now, I can't believe that. Um, but I am wondering what you think about uh, what you are hopeful for our future generation. Uh, as you are with young people every day, you're observing them, maybe what you learn from them and what you're hopeful for. Yeah, I am hopeful for our future generation. Um, I think our future generation is going to go in completely unpredictable directions. Um, my hope is that parents and caregivers, teachers, will let them get started in that direction mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and not, you know, not hold them back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe what you have learned uh, from young people uh, that you didn't expect to or that is part of what guides you and, and keeps you going forward and this great work you're doing. I, I just, every day I learn more and more that um, children have the capacity to direct their own lives mm -hmm. in, in ways that I am still coming to grips with. Hmm. Uh -huh. Well. Uh, perhaps you will write a book someday, and I would love to learn more from you about this great work you've been doing and thank the you. life you've been leading. So thank you so much, Ben, for having Thanks. me here. I've enjoyed talking with you, mm -hmm. and I wish you a great 2019. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too.